Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. Uh, oh, I'm going to cough again. Sorry, I am getting really bad allergies. You see Momo's with me like, you're not feeling good, mommy. Uh, he's good that way. Now he's going to go to sleep. Um, so <laughs> he, he stayed awake just long enough for you guys to see him. And now he's mushing body parts that don't move in a lot of video games. Okay, so <laughs> Momo, we're recording, buddy. Momo. Okay, we're just going to have to act like this is mobile. <laughs> okay, everybody just in. Okay, I'm going to go down here so you guys don't have to see that. Oh, Momo, funny joke. Okay, if you like this sort of content, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Okay, that gave people some Momo. <laughs> That gave people some stuff to watch that that might be amusing <laughs> for the day. Because there's going to be spoilers in The Last of Us 2 uh, coming up. Likely nothing that wasn't in the leaks. So if you've seen the leaks, you're okay. But in terms of, you know, if you want to be to totally spoiler free, I managed to avoid most of them before I started playing. So um, uh, there, there's one major thing that I'm going to talk about that's uh, it, at the end of the prologue. So if you haven't played the game yet, you don't want to get spoiled. Stop watching now. You you got Momo being adorably inappropriate, right, Mo? Right. Okay, so um, this isn't an Alinity stream. Uh, so it, something kind of dawned on me over the weekend, specifically Father's Day, because um, some of you may know who have been watching this channel for a while my uh, stepfather passed away uh, in uh, September of last year. And so this was the first Father's Day that I've, I've spent without him. Um, and it was, a bit of a, it was a bit of a rough day on Sunday because of that, you know, very bittersweet. Um, but thinking about that made me realize that this this culture war that's going on between the people who think The Last of Us 2 are brilliant. So far, I'm not one of them. If you want to watch me uh, play The Last of Us, uh, Twitch tonight, 6 p.m. my time. That's Eastern time. Um, so about uh, seven hours from now when this video launches. Um, but um, so there's this narrative being set that people who really don't like the game really don't like the game because of an anti-SJW agenda and they have some issue about, you know, killing white males and, and it's an identity thing and, and one website even bothered to write an incel review of The Last of Us 2 that was just sort of mocking the perceived viewpoint and of course it totally lacked nuance and so on and so forth. Um, and something didn't sit right with me about the theory that people are mad, um, about Joel's fate because they see themselves in Joel. That didn't seem right to me. Joe's older, very country. I mean, he starts the game in Texas, apparently, uh, the first game, and they end up uh, in Wyoming. They start The Last of Us 2 in Wyoming. Uh, I looked this up because one of my issues with the game is that, you know, Texans in Wyoming speak like millennials in the Bay Area. Um, and if you've ever spent any time in that country or country like it, um, kids... Even even people Ellie and Dina's age don't speak the same way in those rural areas that they do in very hipster. Um, there is a different lexicon and there is a different way of speaking in places where man buns are acceptable. So, you know, that's one of one of the things I find jarring. One of the things I find dissonant in the game. But obviously, I don't identify with Joel. Um, in terms of seeing myself in Joel, um, I don't see myself in Ellie anymore either. <laughs> um, because I'm a pretty forgiving person 
and none of that really exists in this game even 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 with certain outcomes no no i sort of reject a great deal of the thinking that goes on in that game and a lot of other women who reviewed the game feel the same way i do that ellie's decisions just don't make sense to them um but um there's uh the thing i want to get back to this idea and this is the focus of this video today that people are just mad that they killed off joel because it's some sort of identity thing that they see themselves in joel and it's like you're killing me off um I don't think that's what's happening here. And I'm just, if you notice, I keep looking to the side. It's to make sure Loki doesn't crap in my office. He's had a habit of doing that of late. Um, but uh, to me, it's not that people see, uh, people are angry because a character got killed that was like them. A lot of these uh, critics play Japanese games and watch anime and, and characters get killed off all the time. In the Japanese games I've played, and granted I am, I am not the expert in Japanese games that I am in more Western games. I've, I've played some, but um, it, it wasn't my generation, if that makes any sense. But one of the things I do notice is that characters are more likely to sort of sacrifice themselves for the collective in Japanese games. So people who have played a lot of Japanese games, there's no inherent problem with killing off, um, uh, killing off character. It's, it's part of it. Like, you know, we all kind of cut our teeth on Final Fantasy VII and oh no, characters kind of have to die so that, you know, something very Shinto can kind of happen and because Japan. So it's not that. It's not that. We we can find reasons to rule out that theory of why people were so upset. I think people were so upset not because they see um, themselves in Joel. I think what they see in Joel is a father figure who made the choices he made out of a, a, a very deep-seated need to protect his family. And people, people find that noble. People find that virtuous, even with the morally ambivalent elements of the ending of the original Last of Us. We may not agree with Joel's choice, but we can completely understand why he makes it. And then to have him not just, um, not just, not just killed. It wasn't like bang, shot in the head. It was torture, okay? It, it, the cartoonish torture based on very odd voice direction. You get hit in the face with a golf club. You know, that scene... That scene was both gory and not gory enough for me. And I, I have a sense that the, that uncanny element, uncanny valley element of this game is going to bother me to the, the very end. Um, because, like, if somebody's being hit in the face with a nine iron, I wasn't sure if that was a nine iron or a, 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 a you know, a, uh, chip club. I'm blanking the name. Pitching wedge. Is that what it's called? Um, the sand, uh, the sand, uh, sand trap club. Oh, forgetting the name. Sorry. Allergies, but it was one of those metal clubs. Uh, I'll go with nine iron. It sounds better. Um, but I don't know if you've seen the damage those things do to anything they hit multiple hits to the face with a weapon like that would crush bones, would crush teeth. His face would be meat. He wouldn't even be making the noises uh, he did. It, it was false. It was cornball. The, the sounds as Ellie's like moving in to try to find out what's going on are cartoonish. It was badly directed. Troy Baker's a good voice actor. This clearly isn't his fault. He wasn't given appropriate direction, uh, especially with things like that. It's very hard to tell 
how you sound without either a playback or or some sort of direction of no do it more this way do it more that way I mean you're really trusting the director in those roles it's no matter how good you are something like that is very difficult to self-direct because if you're too much in your head you're not in the moment so to speak to use the cheesy cliche that people talk about but it is real you have to sort of be feeling in those moments instead of thinking and and one of the challenges with voice acting is any sort of acting but especially voice acting when it's just your voice and everything counts is to get out of your head and Troy Baker's performance in in this game is too much in his head which is what happens when people don't trust their director uh, and there's a lot of nervous energy, but that's just an observation. That's just a guess, uh, you know, based on experience, but still just a guess back to the idea that, uh, people aren't getting mad, having a visceral reaction to the thing that people are claiming they have a visceral reaction to. What I think the vis- visceral reaction is, is not the, uh, torture and murder and ultimate quasi vilification, retroactive vilification of a white man. I think the reaction is the torture, murder, and uh, essential vilification of somebody who's a caring dad. And I think people want, I think people are upset that instead of the better qualities that Joel had, you know, the, the angel on his shoulder, um, the, the deep caring that the first game kind of reveals like a flower slowly blooming, uh, were, were like retconned away almost. And, and what's left is this insecure, over talky, self-analyzing hipster who ultimately is just a sum of his mistakes instead of the sum of his mistakes as well as his good intentions. The, the loss of nuance in the examination of that choice and the, the, the vilification of a guy who just lost one kid learn like learn to love another despite himself and just couldn't couldn't let her go that is something that i think a lot of players are connecting to on a human level that the game fails to factor in and ultimately that's the failure in that moment and that's what i think that a lot of people are reacting to and that the problem with public outcry that i found and the role of, of professionals in media is, is to sort of, in anything, quite frankly, um, but especially in things like this where you don't have, you know, sort of trained political operatives refining and distilling the message, is to listen what people are saying, listen beyond the tangible details, really listen to understand and realize what they're trying to say. Because it's amazing how many people are really not very good at saying what they mean. They get adjacent, but they don't actually find the core of what they're really upset about. That's a learned skill um, that requires a lot of self-esteem, self-compassion, and maturity to do well. And when you're upset, that's exactly when you sort of suck most at it. And... So, like, I've I've found when there's these massive um, outcries like this, it's not it's not a politics thing. That's too that's too head like that that's too conscious. These roars that periodically happen in gaming are traumatized people reacting to some point of of identity. Um, some core worldview being disrupted, um, and and they're they're crying out, um, and the gaming media doesn't handle it well at all because the response time after time after time has been that hurts. Well, I'm going to do it again. 
I'm going to, oh, that hurt. Oh, oh, you know, like just, they just seem so cruel in their indignation of you are just a low class subhuman. If you don't agree with me that this thing is brilliant. Um, and I guess maybe because I spent the entire battle days in the 2000s as a game journalist, having my opinion dismissed by people exactly like that precisely because I was a woman, I'm not going to repeat the same mistakes with people just because of identifying characteristics they can't control. Somebody's opinion may not may not have the same lived experience as mine. That doesn't mean it's not valid. Somebody's opinion may be overrepresented in a particular media space. That doesn't mean it's not valid. What that means is, okay, we've heard this type of opinion. Let's get another type of opinion now, please. Thanks. Um, but I think what makes me different, and this is... This is quite enlightening. This is a sobering thing to think of is, is because I am older than most women working in games, um, especially in the media side. Um, and because I did spend years just being dismissed by the exact same type of people that have now had a come to Jesus or, you know, pagan feminist entity of your choice, um, you know, moment on gender relations and all of a sudden think that other white, straight, cisgendered men are somehow the enemy. No, you're still the same obnoxious, narcissistic bullies that you were when you were telling me, what do you know? You're a girl. You've just changed your target. Your the, the, the core reaction is not evolved at all. The, the focus has shifted, but the structure is the same. And you don't spend, oh God, um, I don't want to think about how many years I've been doing this, <laughs> half my life, uh, but you don't spend that many years in, in, in the trenches and not get a, a real sense of structure. <laughs> Games are all about structure. Um, and so I tend to look past the specifics of what people are saying and look at the sort of structure of the conversation and the structure I'm seeing looks a lot like bullying to me. Um, and it's like, oh, it's okay to bully certain people because no, stop there. Because it's okay to bully somebody because they're white is no better than it's okay to bully somebody because they're black. You know, Western power dynamics aside, um, it's not more okay to bully a black person in Asia just because it's not a white majority, right? Like, Picking on someone because of identifiable characteristics they cannot control or that you assume they have. You can't tell on the internet, but that's not right, no matter who does it. And we're never going to um, really address systemic, um, systemic inequality if we just go, okay, it's my turn to be the bully now, right? Uh, we're also not going to get good answers because I do think that what the saving grace of the original game was that elevated above a schlocky zombie story, which in many ways, the original Last of Us was a collection of zombie cliches, right down to the cannibal community that also has oddly creepy, you know, quasi pedophiliacs. Um, you know, it, it just hit all the buttons in, in a lot of ways. The thing that made it rise above that is the thing that is missing in a lot, in a lot of horror because horror is, is normally sort of morality, um, morality plays of these people did a bad thing. Therefore it's okay that they die. You know, it's like the old, the old radio series, crime does not pay. You know, those voices, did you like my old, uh, that wasn't even right. That was, that was a goof. That was a little social justice where our voices, crime does not pay. You have to get that, um, that, that fake Midwestern radio voice. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, 
that's sort of what happened with horror and the original last of us twisted that to create a really meaningful touching kind of family of choice thing and a creator has to dismantle that very carefully at their own peril and do more like the Japanese thing where, you know, the spirit of that lost person comes back to help you in a sort of metaphysical way. That's the only way you can really get away with um, killing off a beloved character without getting pretty major backlash. And I think a lot of people in gaming, I know a lot of developers are very quietly going, um, they focused on all the wrong things in this game in terms of dev time. I've, I've heard that from people who are not going to say it publicly. Um, but, uh, you know, just from a story perspective that should really be locked down before you start, but so often in games it's not. Um, in a game like this, I should say, other games, it's like, okay, we're going to get the mechanics down and then figure out a story to fit these mechanics. It, it, both are valid, but in a game like this that, let's face it, is extremely narrative-driven to the point that they've kind of eschewed gameplay completely in the first part of this game, which I will maintain forever is a creative mistake because of that performative gamer gaze thing as well. You've got you've got a one-two punch thing going on. For people who are new to this channel, performative gamer gaze is a tool I use to, or a, a, a description I use that gaming is both something you look at, which is where a lot of that borrowed um, mass communications theory comes from that, that kind of falls apart when it comes to analyzing video games, but it's also something you do. It's something you perform because you have those inputs through the controller. So it is a performative gaze. It is something you look at, but also something you perform. It is both. Um, and the, the lack of performing for three hours in this game, it's not a tutorial. It's not slowly unveiling skills. It, it does that very badly. It's, it, it's, it's wankery. It's look at how brilliant we are. Look at our technology. Look at how good everything looks. Like, it's very easy to make things look that good when it doesn't have to be interactive. I'm not impressed. I'm frustrated as hell because instead of playing a game where I thought I was going to shank mushroom zombies in the neck, I'm watching two, two really unlikable, uh, well, one lesbian, one bisexual woman smoke pot and make out. I didn't need the crotch shot of a 19-year-old, thanks. Like, that... And, and it that all kind of gels. And in one way, they're sort of doing that. Oh, sorry, Ellie, you had a good time. You got to pay now. Um, which is a, a hammy metaphor that's juxtaposed with something later on in a really, really terrible film school way. But it, it really just shows where we're at in game criticism in game analysis that instead of listening to the people that have a different opinion um people who are getting paid to be better than that are finding reasons to dismiss dissent and it's so funny because all these people consider themselves left but I guess left-wingers can be authoritarian as much as right-wingers are, but, you know, if 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 you want to claim to be down with Antifa, don't act like a fascist. And that's sort of the mark of a fascist. Crush all dissent at all costs. Don't, don't be open to a different opinion and go, huh, that's interesting. Okay, cool point of view. You know? Didn't see that from that perspective. I see where we're coming from on this, this, and this point. And that's because it's an industry full of nerds, and I've talked about that before, and I consider myself a nerd, so I say that. That's sort of a self-effacing thing. It's something I sort of had to get over. Uh, the wiser you get, and wisdom is something that only comes with experience, meaning it only comes with age, um, the wiser you get, the more invested you are in being right. 
because you've been wrong enough times to know you get over it. So that's, that's my take on it. That's what has me sort of disturbed outside of this feeling I can't shake of why do I find this so cheesy when other people think it's brilliant? And maybe again, it just is age. It just is life experience. It's getting past things that other people are still stuck in. But more on that in future videos. Twitch tonight. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching.